So Disney has confirmed that Black Widow will still go to the theaters. While the film is currently scheduled to be released in May of 2021, even some have begun to wonder whether or not that will be able to come to fruition given the rate that COVID-19 vaccines are being administered, movie theaters reopening, and all kinds of new strands are popping up. During Disney's quarterly investor call, CEO Bob Chappick was asked about what the future holds for the release of this movie. This approach will probably surprise some Marvel fans, especially if the possibility of the film being delayed yet again, placing it over a year since its initial May 2020 release. Some fans have wondered if a hybrid release offering the film both in theaters and on the premiere access or rental for Disney Plus could be in the cards. Fellow superhero movie Wonder Woman 84 did a similar hybrid release on HBO Max, and Disney has used the same strategy for both Milan and the upcoming Raya and the Last Dragon. At this point, who cares? And I don't mean that maliciously in any way, but we're in February now. It'll be May before you know it. And at that point, it will have been an entire year since we were all supposed to see this movie. <laughs> and it's like, you've done it before, Marvel. Well, maybe not Marvel done it before, but Disney as a company, you've done it before. You've given us Raya, you're giving us Raya and the Last Dragon, you gave us Mulan. There are just some things that you gave on the premiere access that no one really wanted to mess with anyway. But, with this one, I'm pretty sure a lot of fans would hop on that premiere access pass. What is it? 30 bucks. And we would definitely purchase this film. Hell, if you upped it 10 bucks and have us give us the ability to own it. Absolutely. 40 bucks. And I own the movie already. Absolutely. But the fact that you're still pushing for a theatrical release in this climate that we're in in the world i don't understand you i mean don't get me wrong wandavision is great but <laughs> we really do want to see this movie and at this pace of black widow people are checking out no one's gonna even want to see it at this point the steam this movie had is gone it's gone there are people who probably don't even know this movie exists anymore Someone someone probably thinks that they may have thought, oh, yeah, I saw that movie already. Yeah, no, you didn't. You sure? Oh, OK. But that's just the pace of Marvel and how they put their movies out. But people are heavily and rapidly losing interest in this movie. The fact that we have a Black Widow movie so late is another thing. But Marvel, Disney, come on. <laughs> you got to do something. Because... We're beginning to become real apathetic toward our favorite murderous ballerina. But that's just how I feel. Do y'all care anymore? I'm slowly beginning not to. Ladies and gentlemen, blurds and nerds, freaks and geeks. This is Do You Speak Geek? Episode 65. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. This is Do You Speak Geek. I am your host, Nix. Thank you all for joining us. If you join us for the first time, welcome. And if you're an avid listener, welcome, welcome back. This is Do You Speak Geek, where we give you the up to date and latest and greatest that's going on and popping in the geek and nerd realm. Shout out to Spreaker, the home team, giving you all the podcasts. Go there, like and subscribe. And let me know what you think in them comments. And if you don't have a speaker account, that's fine. You can check us out on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Audible, kind of everywhere. So wherever you get your podcasts, hit that search field, put in Do You Speak Geek, and start listening. 
Thanks to all new subscribers and new followers on every platform. And shout out to everyone who's been checking in at DoYouSpeakGeek.com. DoYouSpeakGeek.com, the central hub for everything DYSG. Please be sure to go there and subscribe. We got a newsletter coming, so uh, be on the lookout for that. And thanks to everyone who reached out during the panel discussion that I had with Suffolk Public Library. Appreciate everyone. Shout out to Hilton George and everybody at BlurredCon. Shout out my man, Corey, over there at Suffolk Public Library. Y'all some cool dudes, man. I love y'all so much. Appreciate that love and support y'all give DYSG. And thanks for even having me on there. The social medias. Follow us there. Facebook at DYSGFB. Twitter, DYSG underscore tweets. Instagram at Do You Speak Geek. Y'all have been enjoying and loving the content that Prince Dono has been giving you guys. And I wholeheartedly appreciate it. He loves the content. Even a uh, shout out to my man Slim Jones dropping the incredible artwork for Dono. So we definitely appreciate that. Shout out Slim Jones Toon. Amazing animator. Amazing artist. Please check him out on Instagram as well. But yeah, keep following. Keep watching the content. It's also the place where you can see DYSG lives. We have a few more coming up and one big one. Ooh, I can't wait to tell y'all about it, but I'm going to wait until it's official. Mm. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> check out our YouTube channel as well. It's the only place where you can see the Dono and Daddy show. Please be sure to subscribe, like, Hulk smash that bell for all notifications and leave your comments. We want to know what you guys think. First Friday Fights is there. Talk Tuesday. We are so sorry. In all honesty, me and Dono just plain forgot. But we will be coming to you this Tuesday with Talk Tuesday. Talk about a few things. Definitely going to be talking about WandaVision, if nothing else. So please be sure to go there and subscribe to that content as well. Well, this is a topic or a story that DYSG has been kind of avoiding since it all began, but because it has hit this zenith, we got to talk about it now. We're going to jump right into it. We're going to do what we do about this time, people. Y'all already know. Let's speak geek. Suit up. I want to be the very best. Talk nerdy to me. All right, people. The Mandalorian actress Gina Carano has been fired. And I can hear the collective applause and cheers from all my brothers and sisters who are people of color out there. Actress Gina Carano, known for playing the former Rebel Alliance soldier Cara Dune, was fired from the show, according to io9. In a statement, a Lucasfilm representative spoke on the matter. Gina Carano is not currently employed by Lucasfilms, and there are no plans for her to be in the future. Nevertheless, her social media posts (laughs) degenerate people based on their cultural and religious identities are abhorrent and unacceptable. Now, it's just me thinking out loud, but when she talked about Jewish people I guess that was the nail in the coffin and not everything else she said before but you know I guess until she talks about the right people or the wrong people that's when she gets to ask but I digress Corona was the subject of much criticism when in now deleted Instagram post she compared being a modern day Republican to being a Jew in the Holocaust the hashtag fire Gina Carano has trended on social media in recent months after other incendiary comments by the television and film star. Sources tell Hollywood Reporter that Lucasfilms plan on announcing in December that Carano would start in her own Star Wars series. Those plans have now been scrapped because of her tweets. Less than 24 hours after getting her walking papers, Carano quote unquote clapped back at her detractors and revealed a new movie project she is making with the conservative website, The Daily Wire. Now, that clapback was probably as effective as Ja Rule's clapback (laughs) 
against 50 Cent and G-Unit. So that was very ineffective. No one cares, Carano, no one cares. I mean, outside being okay to look at, you say stupid stuff and things are gonna happen to you this way. Do we feel bad? No. Are we gonna miss you from the show? Eh, maybe, I don't know. But, you know, Sonya Deville's not doing anything. I'd even go so far as say Ronda Rousey's not doing anything. If you kind of want to put someone in that spot to replace that character, I say holler at those two. Or maybe even someone else. Maybe a person of color. I don't know. But Ding Dong, which is dead, we're going to move on to my favorite portion of the show, Source Wall. Man, you come right out of a comic book. Behold the Source Wall. Can you read, my son? Well, that depends. There is nothing wrong with reading a story and looking at the pictures. Enough said, Stan. Let's jump right into the pull list. Radiant Black number one. I really enjoyed this one. Nathan Barrett has just turned 30 and things aren't great. He's working and failing at two jobs. His credit card debt is piling up and his only move is moving back home with his parents. Oh, man, I feel you. But when Nathan discovers and unlocks the ethereal cosmic radiant, he's given the power to radically change his fortunes. There's just one problem. The powers don't belong to him. And the cosmic beings who created them want them back by any means necessary. This was the Source Wall Wednesday pick for this week. Please check this one out. It was... I felt it was amazing, and I'm definitely ready to read more from this one. Future State, Dark Detective number three. In this issue, Bruce Wayne meets the next Batman. As the Dark Detective makes his move to put an end to the villainous magistrate once and for all, the man who once wore the cowl enters the next Batman, or encounters the next Batman. And these two have some questions for each other. Fist will fly at this explosive meeting erupts in the skies over Gotham. But with the clock ticking, can Bruce finish what he started and unlock the secrets of the fascist supervillain that plagues his city? We shall see. And in Grifters Part 2, the lucky streak that Cole Cash and Luke Fox have enjoyed just hit a brick wall in the form of the Huntress. The -the over-the-top adventure in the gutters of Gotham City concludes in the most bone-crushing fashion possible. That was a tongue twister there. Hmm. I'll get that next time. (laughs) Impure number one. This was a dope little indie pick that I found. Years after Nero and Minerva's home world, Castor was destroyed by aliens. The siblings joined the dreaded Earth forces to ensure something like this will never happen again. When Minerva betrays her Nero and all they ever believed in, it is up to Nero to stop his sister before she reaches the alien alliance. For what Minerva has stolen may well turn the tides of war and spell humanity's downfall. This was a dope one. Please be sure to check that one out. Impure number one. And finally, we have the Spider-Man, the amazing Spider-Man number 59. Mr. Negative is back and wants only one thing, Martin Lee. But how is that possible? Spider-Man is still reeling from the Kindred affair and Peter will not stand for anything else to be taken away from him. Pretty interesting here. Check this one out when you get an opportunity to as well. In Source Wall News, this was such a... A good thing to see because I was they were they have been pretty quiet since Fandom. However, after months of teasing that the comic imprint will be returning back to publishing, DC has finally announced new details of exactly what's in store for Milestone Comics. Yes! On this past Friday, the publisher announced the first wave of new milestone related content, including new digital first miniseries revolving around characters such as Static, Icon and Rocket and Hardware. This will kick off with Milestone Returns Infinite Edition number zero, an oversized extended cut of the digital one shot that was available during DC Fandom. 
Infinite Edition Zero will arrive digitally on February 26th and in comic book stores on May 25th. Please, please go support this. All my blurs out there, please go support Milestone. We got to get these people to the forefront and make them a powerhouse in this comic industry, just like we've done for Marvel and DC all these years. Speaking of Marvel, Marvel is uh, deciding to add Victor Von Doom to the Guardians of the Galaxy. Starting in April's Guardians of the Galaxy number 13, the 175th issue of the title in legacy numbering, the core team will expand to feature a huge roster of characters, which will feature returning heroes like Star-Lord, Rocket, and Gamora, and the addition of others to the team like Wendell Vaughn, the original Quasar, and Doctor Doom. The upcoming Guardians of the Galaxy 13 to 15 will feature three interconnected covers that will show off the full team whose ranks include Hulkling, Star-Lord, Groot, Nova, Wiccan, Gamora, Quasar, our Kincaid version, Rocket Raccoon, Doctor Doom, Super Scroll, Moon Dragon, Marvel Boy, Mantis, Drax, Philavel, Hercules, and Quasar Wendell Vaughn. <sighs> Doctor Doom in the Guardians of the Galaxy. How do I feel about that? I will save my judgments for when I read it. If I read it. Because what they're doing to Thor, I'm not too happy with Marvel right now. But that's another story. Let's watch this. Watch this, y'all. Thunder. Thunder. Lannister always pays his debts. Whoa, dude. I am the villain of the story. All right, you bingers and couch potatoes, get comfortable. I got a lot of stuff coming at you right now. Let's start off with HBO Max's The Last of Us. We got some casting choices here, people, and for our two main characters. Let's go ahead and get into it. Bella Ramsey, best known for playing Lina Mormont in HBO's Game of Thrones, will be the main character, Ellie, in this adaption on HBO Max. The Hollywood Reporter confirmed Ellie's casting and cleared up any rumors of another, if anything, bit the casting news as well. True Detective star Mahash- Mahashala Ali will not be playing Joel in the series, however... Pedro Pascal will. <laughs> oh, man. Pedro Pascal, also known as The Mandalorian from the show The Mandalorian, has been cast to play Joel in the upcoming series. As we all know, the series The Last of Us is about a young orphan uh, who has discovered that she is immune to a virus that has overtaken Earth that turns infected people into horrible creatures, a.k.a. zombies. A fixer named Joel is tasked with delivering Ellie to a group called the Fireflies so they can create a cure for the virus. This series is being written by Mazin and Druckmann. Druckmann will also be the executive producer alongside Chernobyl and Game of Thrones, Cheryl Strass, Naughty Dog co-president Evan Well, and PlayStation Productions, Asad Quilbash and Carter Swan. This show is going to be fire. I have all hope in this show with the names attached to this show and the casting choices. I have all hope in this show. I think it's going to be dope and I can't wait to see it. Jared Leto's Joker in Justice League revealed. Now, Zack Snyder released the first look at Jared Leto's newly reimagined Joker in in Zack Snyder's Justice League ahead of the film's release next month. By the way, by the time you hear this podcast, you will have seen the new trailer dropped on Valentine's Day. And shout out to all the couples out there for Valentine's Day. Anyway, back at it. The image which sees Leto reimagined in a style that recalls Grant Morrison's Clown at Midnight style for the character also abandons the most controversial element of Dave Ayer's Joker from the Suicide Squad, the tattoos. They're replaced essentially by cuts and scars bringing the vibe more in line with Christopher Nolan's Joker from the Dark Knight trilogy, a role which won him an Oscar, Heath Ledger, rest in peace, especially with the uh, long hair and messy red smile. Now, I saw the images and I was like, oh, oh, okay, I, I, I see what they're doing here. Now, 
of course there'll be some continuity issues going on here so we kind of want to know what's going on there i don't know i think once we finally see this movie we'll all be done with the dc extended universe by the way 10 minute intermission in the four hour movie just letting you know that too sonic the hedgehog the movie has a sequel And the name of the sequel has been announced, and it is called Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Yeah. Breaking news, right? (laughs) The name with the Tails-inspired logo was revealed on Twitter, along with a reconfirmation of its release date, which is April 8th, 2022. The announcement came with a short 10-second video clip of the title being revealed, which plays a version of the Emerald Hill Zone music as the letters form. The logo itself is the same that was used in the original, but with the number two having Tails twin foxtails attached to it. I kind of got vibes from when I was a kid, man. Like, I don't know about y'all growing up, but back in my day, (coughs) excuse me, (coughs) well, back in my day, we would would go down to the mall and uh, go into the, department store called Sears and in Sears we would have we would go to the little toy section and we would play Sega Genesis while our parents shopped it was a good time we would play that thing for hours thank you old man appreciate that (laughs) well that's as much confirmation as you can get that Tails will definitely be in the movie now as for other characters there are some current rumors that suggest that Aquaman's Jason Momoa has been offered the role of Knuckles, although there is no official word to support that. But, ah, I'm with it. Whatever. Let's do it. With more HBO Max news, they have announced um, some new adult shows, including a Velma Dinkley origin story. Right? So let's let's hear about it. So HBO Max has announced a series of orders for three new adult animated shows, including a Scooby-Doo spinoff that will tell the origin of Velma Dinkley in a revival of Clone High. Now, the original and comedic series aptly titled Velma will unmask the complex and colorful past of the underappreciated brains of the Scooby-Doo Mystery Inc. gang Velma Dinkley voiced by executive producer Mindy Colling. Dope, right? Charlie Grandy, Howard Klein, and Sam Register will also be serving as executive producers on the 10-episode series, which will be produced by Warner Brothers Animation. In addition to Velma, HBO Max ordered two seasons of Clone High, a reimagined of the Phil Lord, Chris Miller, and Bill Lawrence 2002 series set at a high school of clones of historical figures. As well as writing the series, Lord and Miller will be reteaming with Lawrence to serve as executive producers on the MTV revival, with Erica Renijoff assigned as showrunner. These new projects join an already packed slate of upcoming adult animated shows with the likes of Harley Quinn, The Prince, Santa Inc., 10-Year-Old Tom, and The Boondocks previously announced by the network, as well as an all-new roster of HBO Max adult animated originals, including Hello, Paul, Obi, Uncanny Valley, and Cover, which are all currently in development. Definitely all about that clone high. Definitely want to see this one rebooted. But that Velma, yeah. If anyone knows like I know, when you see Velma cosplays, <laughs> you feel you feel away, right? <laughs> but uh yeah, let's see how this one goes. Adult animated, it's gonna get crazy. I can't wait. Captain Marvel 2 has cast Zawe Ashton as a villain. Now, Captain Marvel 2 has found his villain after uh, word surfaced was circling Zawe Ashton, who has been uh, cast for a role as the big bad of the sequel movie. Though it's said she's playing a villain, it's unclear which character she will be. The character, the, uh, the actress Ashton will be also joined by Brie Larson, Tiana Paris, and Iman Vellani in this feature. 
Paris joining uh, Marvel's big screen action after the critically acclaimed WandaVision, while Valeni is currently filming Miss Marvel for Disney+. Plus. The report also suggests action will be the main villain, and the identity is not available at the time. Now, I'm thinking to myself, did Marvel just kind of low-key give us a black rogue? Because if you watch the X-Men animated series like I did, Miss Marvel and Rogue weren't exactly on the same page. And if you were to make Rogue the big bad for this one, kind of introducing her and then making her a hero later, I think that would work. Maybe that's just me. But again, that would work. I don't know. What do y'all think? Let's hop in to a really quick thumb life. Peace, love, and video games. That's all like Donkey Kong. Yeah. That man is playing Galaga. All right, gamers, real quick news, nothing big, just something a little, little one story, but it's pretty awesome, though. Epic Games announces a new metahuman creator that helps developers create characters. Epic Games has announced its newest tool to help game developers and, and creators realize their visions called metahuman creator. It's a browser based app that lets developers create 3D characters and models far more quickly and easily than previously possible. MetaHuman Creator lets developers create new characters that can be sculpted and crafted as desired. Developers can create single characters and scale up to many, all with different features, hairstyles, and body types. These models can then be animated or motion captured or worked with various other uh, other programs, including Apple's ArcGIT. With MetaHuman Creator, Epic Games is offering a tool that can speed up a key process in game development, though MetaHuman Meta Creator can also be used for non-gaming projects as well. Ultimately, it's about streamlining development, something Epic is already done and is doing with easily imported environment models and lighting with the Unreal Engine 5. This is kind of unprecedented. It's really going to cut time when it comes to developers making new games for us. And that means, that only means we're gonna get more games more frequently than we did before. And especially in this current time right now with the pandemic and certain developers are slow to give us new content or DLC or even games for that matter. This is a really big move and I definitely appreciate Epic Games for doing this. That means we'll get games a lot more faster and even once we become, we get out of the pandemic, we'll probably be getting new releases for games like every other week and I mean like multiple titles, like back in the PS2 days. So this I'm definitely excited for. Big shout to Epic Games. But let's speak technical for a moment. Technically speaking. Your technological advancements. 1.21 gigawatts. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Now, technically speaking, NVIDIA's RTX 3060 GPU will be released in late February. NVIDIA announced that its mid-range RTX 3060 graphics card will be released on February 25th. Customers will be able to order it from retailers starting at 9 a.m. that day. No Founders Edition of the 3060 is planned according to The Verge. The RTX 3060 will cost you 329 bucks, making it significantly more affordable than the last RTX 3060 Ti, which is at 399 or the much more powerful 30 series GPUs, which topped at about 1500 bucks. <laughs> Utilizing NVIDIA's Ampere tech ar architecture, the RTX 3060 has 12 gigabytes of GDDDR6 memory with the 13 shader T-flops, 25 RT T-flops, and a one-on-one -on -one sensor T-flops. Now at 329, this is a kind of a steal, so it should allow price conscious PC gamers to build a rig that rivals or possibly even beats the PS5 or Xbox Series X for roughly the same price. So 
if you're thinking about building your own rig, this is the opportunity and this is the GPU to get your hands on. I mean, 329, yo, I mean, <laughs> why not? Hell, I might even start my, building my own. I've never built my own PC before. Might be something to do. Might be a project I record for you guys and let you go on the journey with me. But until then, that's my time. So I'm going to get on out of here. Thank you all for listening. Please, please subscribe to the content, follow the content, like the content. Let me know what you think about that content. Visit the website, do you speak geek.com. Visit our social medias, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Check out the YouTube channel. Please be sure to subscribe, like, and get those notifications there. As always, people, live to play, play to win, win to live. I speak geek. Do you speak geek?